In today's video, we'll be going over my best stocks for passive income on Robinhood. So the stock market has been on fire for 2020. And this year, I'll be going over some of the best things that I've done with my portfolio and moving forward, what I'll be doing in 2021. So if you guys don't know by now, this channel is all about passive income from dividend investing. Most of the companies that I own in my portfolio are, are paying me for just holding on to them. And that was a major key for me when I started investing two to three years ago. I'm not gonna spend all my time on the chart trying to trade 10 times a day, go in and out of these trades, try to buy high, buy, uh, buy low, sell high. That's just not me, I don't, I don't got time for that. So if you guys are interested in collecting dividends, collecting passive income, don't forget to smash the like button and check out the description down below for some free stocks. And let's jump right into the portfolio. So my portfolio is sitting at just under $73,000 today. And uh, today we didn't do so well, but over the past you know, weeks, months, and year, on the three months chart here, we're up uh, $12,000, almost 20%. On the one year chart here, we're up almost 30%. And in the all time chart here, we're up almost 32%. So I'm just gonna get this straight out the way. I'm not a genius when it comes to investing in the stock market. If you guys have been investing since March of 2020, when the, the markets was at an all time low, then most likely if you just bought and held since then, you guys would have very similar results to me. So I wanna remind you guys, my thing is I'm buying companies that are gonna be paying me for holding them in dividends. So let's jump right into it. These are all the stocks in my portfolio and I organized them by my equity. And um, this is all of them right now. So I own about 11 uh, companies in my portfolio. All the dividends from here is roughly, uh, let me check out here. So my projected annual income for this portfolio is $3,335. These are uh, what my dividend payments are looking like on a monthly basis. Uh, this month, I'm estimated I'm be get, I'll be getting around almost $400 in dividends. And um, here we go. This is the next 30 days. So Nike is gonna be paying me, SPHD is gonna be paying me, AGNC, Realty Income, and PSEC. And uh, this is what it looks like on a year around basis. So. This isn't the first time I talk about this on the channel and I'm pretty sure this is not gonna be the last time, but uh, let's go a bit more specific into some of the companies that I own right now. So first company that I own right now is Gap. This one does not pay a dividend. It used to pay a dividend and I bought this company when it was around 13, $14. Uh, so let's take it out here. So I own 1000 shares, average cost $14.14 and uh, currently I'm up almost six thousand dollars on this um on this investment i would say my total return is a lot more than this because i did do a little bit of buying and selling so i think the total return is closer to almost 50 percent but if we scroll down a little bit deeper down here i want you guys to take a look at the morning star report so when it comes to robin hood they give you the Morningstar report if you're uh, subscribed to Robinhood Gold. And basically Morningstar rates all of these companies in my portfolio. A one star rating is basically saying that this is a very expensive company. A three star rating means that it's a fair value and a five star rating means that um, this uh, company could be undervalued. But don't just, you know, use these tools to your advantage. Don't just rely on these tools to um, tell you when to buy or when to sell. But right now, currently the fair value, Morningstar is saying it's $21. And uh, I bought this company when it was, like I said, $13, $14. So right now I'm considering selling a little bit more, but I'm gonna be holding off until maybe the end of quarter one. Gap used to be a high dividend payer when it, came, when it comes to their dividends, but because of everything that went on this year, they had to cut the dividends. And um, that's what drove the price down all the way to $13. And um, what drove the price back up to $20 was uh, some of the new marketing strategies that they're using. They restructured their company, um, changed up their CEO. They also started closing down a lot of the unprofitable um, businesses and uh, unprofitable stores when it comes to Gap, Banana Republic, um, Old Navy, Althena. These are some of the brands that are in the company and they, in my opinion, one of the best moves they made was hire uh, Kanye West to be their designer for their new clothing line, or or a better way to say it is their partnership with Kanye West. Yes, he's eccentric. Yes, he's a little bit um, out there, but 
there's no mistaking that his fashion is trend setting. He, what I, what I envision him do for Gap is the same thing that I envision uh, what he did for Adidas. And what he did for Adidas was bring in billions of dollars in revenue when it comes to his uh, Yeezy shoe line. So, so that is, so that's what I'm speculating when it comes to uh, my Gap play. And another thing is, I believe Gap will start to pay their dividends, maybe not next year, but maybe a few years down the line. So that's some of the reasons why I'm holding Gap. I'm not planning to buy more, but I definitely think that uh, it will be a passive income play uh, later on, maybe in another year or so. Next here, next in line here, we have ExxonMobil in my portfolio. This is the opposite of Tesla right now. It's basically been crashing all year long. So it's down about 41%, and I've been continuing to buy this company. Um, all year long, even though it's uh, crashed all the way down to uh, this price level. So ExxonMobil is one of the highest dividend payers in my portfolio. I've been collecting hundreds of dollars in dividends over the last year, um, every, single, every single quarter, I believe. So I own 300 shares, average cost is at $42.61. I'm down a total of almost $400 um, on this investment. So now let's jump into the Morningstar tool here. Morningstar is rating this a five out of five star. So I feel like ExxonMobil is very undervalued and in the next year, they have a potential to uh, come back. Vaccines out now, millions of people around the world are using the vaccine. So I think over the next year, a lot of people are gonna be going back to work. And let's not forget all of the other industries that are using um, crude oil and gas. We got uh, commercial ships, we have uh, rockets that fly into outer space. What do you think um, Stock X, Stock X, SpaceX? What do you think SpaceX is using to send their rockets into outer space? Uh, we have planes that are flying around over our heads. What do you think they're using to uh, fuel their jets? So let's not forget how much fuel that we're gonna be using next year and for years on out. The next stock in the portfolio is Realty Income. This one is the most reliable stock in my portfolio. I don't think it performed the best, but basically Realty Income is a REIT. It's been paying me monthly dividends. That's another thing that attracted me to investing in the stock market. I'm more of a real estate investor. Most of my net worth is in rentals that I own and commercial properties that I own. And uh, Realty Income pays monthly dividends. I was like, okay, I can understand that. I collect rent every month and uh, this company is paying me dividends every single month. You know, I just connected the two and that's exactly how I got into investing in the stock market. So realty income sitting at $61.27. Um, total return so far, I'm seeing $640 in profit over the last uh, two, three years that I've been owning this company. And um, if we take a look at the dividends that they've been paying out, uh, let's take a look at the, the, the Morningstar report. Three out of five stars, so this is a fair value company. Um, they're saying fair value at 65. Right now is at 61, so there's a little bit of wiggle room there to grow. But um, basically, I know a lot of people don't believe me that there's monthly paying dividend stocks out there, so these are all the dividends that I've been collecting. <clears throat> and if we scroll all the way down here, the first dividend that I've ever collected was on November 21st, 2018, and it was only 22 cents. So over time, I just invested more and more into this company, and now I'm collecting $23.40 in dividends. That's enough to pay for my Netflix and my HBO Max subscription right there. So the next stock on the list is AT&T, and I just made a video all about AT&T, so go check it out here in the cards if you guys have a chance. So I'm just gonna go over this really quickly. I own 300 shares, average cost is at $29.23, total return is negative $200, and I'm still continuing to buy AT&T. I feel like it is still a bit undervalued, uh, Morningstar report is saying that it's uh, fair value is around $36. So four out of five stars when it comes to uh, the Morningstar rating. The main thing about AT&T, I've just been collecting the dividends. So I'm getting paid to hold this stock and I'm gonna continue to hold this company and collect dividends over the next few years. So the next stock on the list is SPHD. This one is one of my all time favorites, $37. And uh, let's take a look. Uh, I have a pending dividends of $30.79. Uh, I own 200 shares. Average cost is at $36.87. So total return is not doing too well. And that is because SPHD hasn't been a good performer this year. So I haven't invested that much into SPHD, but I've been holding about 200 shares for over the last like um, eight to nine months. I haven't really touched them, 
and I've been investing a lot more into growth stocks over the last few months. So this one, I've just been holding it, collecting the monthly dividends, and um, the monthly dividends are, as we can see, 30, about $30 every single, every single month. And like I said, that's enough to buy a meal for one day every single month. So the next stock in the portfolio is Square. Square is one of these growth companies that has just been on fire in 2020. And I plan, I'm planning to own at least, at least 100 shares of Square. I think that's as much as I can afford at the moment. Uh, right now I'm at 15, so I got a long way to go. Total return, almost $800. In the last three months, it's over 30%. So a lot of the gains in my portfolio has been because of this growth stock. Um, Square does not pay a dividend. Um, I've been experimenting a lot with this portfolio over the last um, few months here, buying into more growth stocks, just because you know, I, I want a piece of that action too. Dividends are slow, steady, and very consistent, where growth stocks are, you know, you can see it grow over 30% in three months. So, you know, I do fall into some of these uh, different strategies as well. As long as there's a way to make money in the stock market, I'm willing to at least try it out one time. And uh, growth stocks is definitely one of those ways. But if we take a look at the Morningstar report for Square, we can see it's only a one star rating. That means that it could be overvalued at $213 but the fair value that they're giving them is 78. So like I said, Morningstar is not end all be all when it comes to their rating. It's just a good start, a good guidance. And from there, you figure out what's your risk. From there, you figure out what you're willing to invest. And um, you just do a lot more research before you pull the trigger into buying any of these companies. The next company in my portfolio here is AGNC Investments. This one is yet another monthly paying dividend company. If we take a look at my position, I have 200 shares, about $3,000 in market value, and I'm up $140 on this position. And on top of that, I've been collecting all of the dividends every single month as well. So um, AGNC is kind of similar to um, kind of similar to realty income, but it's a M REIT, is a mortgage REIT. So the the business model is a little bit different, but it's still in the real estate industry here. And uh, if we take a look at all the dividends, I've been collecting roughly $12 every single month for the last uh, few months here. And before that, it was a little bit less. I've been up and down with, with AGNC, but uh, it's been a staple of my uh, portfolio over the last two years now. The next stock in the portfolio is Starbucks. We all know what Starbucks is. We go grab a coffee every day. America runs on Starbucks. Or oh, is that Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah, I think that's not good donuts, but you guys know exactly what I mean. Starbucks is at $105. I own 30 shares, average cost is $79. I've been buying them for a while, but once they popped to $100, I was not, I started to slow down my investment into them. So total return here so far is 833%. If we take a look at the Morningstar report, three out of five stars, fair value of $100. So is it a good time to get in right now? It's a fair time to get in. And um, I use a bunch of different um, tools to analyze these companies as well. So Morningstar is good. I'm using Simply Safe Dividends. I'm using um, Finbox. So links in the description if you guys want to use any of the same tools as I'm using. Uh, my plan with Starbucks is to own about 100 shares and then run some covered call options on them. And uh, I'll, I'll make an, a separate video about doing the wheel strategy and collecting premiums on covered calls. That's another way to generate income from uh, my portfolio. So we got a few more companies in the portfolio here. I'm gonna speed this up. Prospect Capital is actually a company I'm considering selling tomorrow. So I just want you guys to know that first off. Uh, Prospect Capital, I, it's been in my portfolio for two years now. And um, I'm just not, this is one of my mistakes over the last two years. This is just one of the companies that hasn't been um, doing well and I've just been holding on to it just because I'm a bit stubborn. I, I try to hold on to the companies that I buy for at least a few years before I sell them and I'm considering selling them tomorrow. All right, so luckily you're watching this today. So uh, when it comes to PSEC, I own 500 shares. The total return is $60.40. So we can, like I said, I've been owning them for so long all I've been doing here is just collecting the dividends and um, the performance for this company just hasn't been good over the last two years and I, I'm kind of just done with them. Uh, so if we take a look at my um, dividends from them, you know, the dividends are nice to have and if we add the dividends into my total returns, we can uh, definitely I'm up a lot more, but um, this is one of the companies where 
I kind of uh, wish I just invested it in something else. We all make mistakes, okay? I know you guys have too. Uh, next, we have Apple, $135. You can't really go wrong with Apple, but right now it's a little bit pricey in my opinion. Um, I'm not really buying too much more at the moment. I own 20 shares, average cost $111, total return $460, 20%. Over, uh, I've been owning Apple for at least a year plus now. And the thing with Apple, I feel like it's always overvalued, but the price continues to go up. Um, maybe I'm just pumping their company because I, I've been buying a lot of Apple products, like, or they've been selling a lot of Apple products. One way or the other, um, fair value is their uh, Morningstar is saying is 85 bucks. So I believe, you know, Morningstar is wrong sometimes. I feel like Apple is, Fair value, roughly around a hundred plus dollars right now. Would I buy Apple at one hundred thirty-five dollars? I would, but I'll be dollar cost averaging. I'm not going to just throw in like ten ten thousand dollars into Apple right now. I'll just be buying a little bit every single week or so. My future plan for Apple is to own about a hundred shares and just cap it off at there and just ride this off into the sunset. Next, we have Nike. Nike has been a great performer over the last year. 40 percent over the last year, amazing. I've owned uh, Nike now for over two years. Um, it's a dividend payer as well, but not that big of a dividend payer. You can see I'm only getting $4.13. So when it comes to my position, I own 15 shares. Average cost is $82.73. Total return, $800, 70% total return. So I've, I've held this company for quite a while now. And um, that's the thing, when you buy and hold great quality companies, I feel like that's the main key to my success. And on top of that, I'm collecting the dividends, obviously. Uh, when it comes to the Morningstar report, fair value is at 107 with a two-star rating. So, so it's getting to the so Nike right now is getting to the more expensive side, but th with their business model and how they just sponsor all of these super athletes all the time, influencer marketing. I feel like that's the new way to make money, especially online. When you when you want a bigger audience and when you want to sell more products, influencer marketing is the way to go. So my New Year's resolution for the Robinhood Challenge, the Robinhood portfolio is to hit 100K by next year. And I think I should be able to do that unless the market crash. And with how things are going, I feel like uh, crazy things are gonna happen. So uh, stay with me, subscribe if you guys wanna know what I'm gonna be doing when all these crazy things happen. Um, hit that notification to see my next video. Like the video if you guys haven't liked it already. Uh, go follow me on Instagram. Go follow me on my second channel. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.